Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for Chronicles of Crime 1400. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as we play through the entire tutorial scenario that comes with the game. Now, I would like to ask that if you end up enjoying this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to johngetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and some of them come with cool bonuses like voting on a few of the videos that I film each month. All right, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to go. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I am showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. Now, this is a fully cooperative scenario-based game where every time you play, you're going to select a specific scenario in the Chronicles of Crime application, and then you are going to work together to try and solve the associated criminal investigation. Now, as we play through the game, we are going to visit various locations, which will have different people in them, and we will also search for a variety of clues. We will then be able to ask the various people at these locations questions about other people, as well as clues, and we will collectively use all of this information to try and solve the investigation. Now, for this video today, we are going to be playing through the entire tutorial scenario, which is a shorter scenario than normal, and it's built around showing you all of the different mechanics of the game. With that in mind, I think let's now go ahead and start playing, so let's focus over here on the app. As you can see, there are a variety of options showing, and today we are playing Chronicles of Crime 1400, so we can click on that. Then there are several missions showing up, and today we are playing the tutorial, and now it says we are going to discover the game with this tutorial case and solve the mystery of the missing ring. Note, this is not a full-length scenario, but rather an introduction to the game mechanics. Now we can go ahead and start this by pressing the play button, and now we can see the game is officially starting. In the top right corner, it says this is day one at nine o'clock in the morning. So it says, welcome to the Chronicles of Crime 1400 tutorial. Disclaimer, this scenario is an introduction to the game, which explains how to play without giving you a real investigative challenge. So now we can press next to start. And it says Chronicles of Crime 1400 is a cooperative game where all the players work together to solve a crime. You play as Abelard Laval, a knight famous for unraveling the mysteries of medieval Paris. Next up, it says we can tap the icon in the lower left corner to see a menu where we can access things like the history feature. This allows us to browse through all of the scenes that we've seen so far, so we can go ahead and do that. And as you can see, we can press the buttons to scroll through everything that we've seen, so we don't have to worry about memorizing anything that is currently on the screen, because we can always go back and see what we saw earlier. Next up, it says we can start by setting up all the game components, but as you saw before, I have already put all of these things out on the table. So we can now move on, and once again we see some more setup instructions, which I will just skip through because I've already done this. Okay, we are now ready to start playing. You are woken up by your dog, Percival, licking your face. Sunlight lances through the shutters of your bedroom window, and church bells ring out at the terse hours. It looks like you overslept. You've had one of those strangely vivid dreams that have haunted you since your early childhood. Luckily this time there was no blood or violence, just a single scene, three people and a carriage. With this in mind, it now says that each scenario of Chronicles of Crime 1400 begins with you having a prophetic dream represented by vision cards. For this tutorial, we now have to take prophecy number one and put it face up on the table. So we can come over to this deck of many different prophecies, and number one is right at the top. So we can place that right over here, and this is the prophetic dream that we just woke up from. Let's now come back to the app, and it says the vision cards depict scenes from either the near future or the recent past, giving additional context that might help you solve the case. You barely have time to put on some clothes and eat breakfast when a messenger knocks at your door. Sir Lovell, says the boy after you let him in, my master kindly asks you for help. If I understand correctly, it's about a ring that has disappeared in mysterious circumstances. Now, as you can see next to the ring, it shows a magnifying glass and an 11. And this now says that among the evidence category cards, you can now find the jewelry card, which is number 11, and this card will represent the lost ring. So let's glance up here at the 38 evidence cards. Now these can be placed face up like this or in several stacks that players are allowed to look at at any point. For this tutorial, we have them all face up, and we can see number 11 is right over here, and it says jewelry on the front. Now proceed, and it says we now put the card on the blue area of the evidence board to mark that you know about this object, but haven't found it yet. Moving on, the messenger boy now says my master also sends you this pouch of coins to cover any expenses. With this in mind, we can now put the coins card on the red area of the evidence board to mark that you physically possess this item, and it's worth noting the actual location within these zones does not matter for these cards. 
We can now move on, and it seems as the boy is leaving, he says, If you are willing to help my master, please visit him at his apartment near the Notre Dame Cathedral. So, a location has been mentioned, and in particular, location A. This means we have to place the corresponding location board out on the table, and we also have to notice that each of these location cards are double-sided. So, we have found A, and we can put this right over here, and we are going to do this every time a new location is mentioned. Well, I think we should travel to this location, and we can do that by tapping Next, and then we can scan the QR code on this location with our app. We do this by putting the QR code into the middle of the screen, and then we can tap and hold, and just like that, we have now traveled to the Allard's apartment. It says you arrive at an elegant apartment in a prestigious location near the Notre Dame Cathedral. An angry-looking nobleman, number 27, opens the door and lets you in. He introduces himself as Cedric Allard and declares he's the one who sent the messenger. At the back of the room, you can see a well-dressed silent woman, number 1. So we can now take the character deck and find numbers 27 and 1. So here is number one. We can place them into any of the four available spots in this location. And then when we find 27, we can put that person right over here. Now we are going to do this every time a new character is mentioned. If you want to interact with a character, you have to scan the QR code on that character. So for now, let's start by talking to Cedric. Once again, we can center that QR code on the screen and then tap. It now says, Albard, I'm glad you came. Your father told me about your talents. God knows I could use them right now. So, we are now in conversation mode with Cedric, and we can ask him about people or objects by scanning their cards. You are only allowed to use cards that have been revealed to you already. Let's go ahead and start by asking Cedric about himself. We can do this by scanning him again, and we can also scan the ring. So, let's scan Cedric. And it says, I'm Cedric Alart. I befriended your father during the war. He told me about your talent for solving mysteries, so you were the first person I thought of when the ring went missing. Next up, let's go ahead and ask Cedric about the ring. Now that is, again, this jewelry card down here, and it's in the blue zone to note that we don't know where that ring is. Once again, we know where the coins are because they were given to us. So we can scan the QR code for the ring. And he says, The missing ring belonged to my great-grandfather, and it means a lot to me. I kept it in the jewelry box in my bedroom. No one was supposed to touch it. Here's what happened. I was at my lodge for a few days hunting. Yesterday, I returned and found out that our servant left with one of my rings. How? Why? I don't understand a damn thing about it. Do you, Abelard? So, a new character has been mentioned, in this case, number 25. Now we can pull that character out of the deck, and since we don't know where this character is, we have to put them down into one of the unknown whereabouts spots at the bottom of the evidence board. Listen, Abelard, do your thing. Find this girl and the ring, but most of all, figure out what really happened here. So, our mission has just been described to us. We need to establish why the servant and the ring disappeared and where they are now. These are the things we'll be asked about when we decide to finish the game. My wife and I will help you with any questions. You can also search our living room where the servant kept her things. In order to search a room, we first have to end our conversation by tapping the goodbye button, and then we can tap the search the scene button. We'll then have 40 seconds to look at a virtual reality scene. In order to do this, we are going to physically turn around and check the scene out in 360 degrees, or we can swipe left, right, up or down, and pinch to zoom. Now, we are going to want to describe what we see to the other players so that they can find all of the matching categories among the evidence category cards. Once our time runs out, we or another player can search for clues again. Then we should scan all of the evidence categories that we picked out and see what clues we found. So, let's say goodbye to Cedric for now, and then let's search the scene. As you can see, we now have multiple options, including potentially putting a separate mechanical piece over the phone so that we can look at the scene in 3D, but for this tutorial, we are not going to go with that, so we will click the middle button. Now we are going to have 40 seconds, and I am physically holding the phone and now looking around the scene. Now we can also look around the scene by pressing on the screen and swiping in every direction, and we can pinch to zoom in a little more. Now the first thing that we see is a bed and there's some stuff underneath it. it, looks like maybe some clothing. There's also a chest over there that might have some stuff in it. There's a big tapestry on the wall as well as a fireplace. It appears there is a painting on the wall as well. Now over here at the door, there is a big crossbow by the wall. And if we keep looking around, there's a window with some curtains. Now on the table, there is, ooh, let's see, a bottle that has some symbols on it. And there is also a Bible. Oh, it looks like our 40 seconds is now just about up. Next up, we can pass this to somebody else if they also want to look at the scene, but I think we are good, so let's press no. 
Now that we've finished searching the scene, we should take a look at all of these different categories and try to find some that seem like they are applicable. If we were playing with multiple people, they would probably be grabbing these as we were talking about what we saw in the scene. Now, the first thing that jumped out to me was that crossbow, which is a ranged weapon. And then there was also certainly some bedding. After that, we did see a painting on the wall, and there was certainly a book in the middle of the table. On the table, there was also a bottle, and I'm pretty sure there was a big box at the foot of the bed, so let's take that as well. Now, we've pulled six of these, and we could certainly pull more, but I think this is probably a good starting point. So we've put the six clues out on the table, and now we need to scan each of them to see if they are actual evidence for this case. Let's start with ranged weapons, and it says that's a type of crossbow used for hunting. Well, it looks like we have found a clue. That means we can place the ranged weapon into the red area because we obviously know where it is. After that, let's go ahead and search for more clues. Next up, let's take a look at this bedding. Now that says there's nothing unusual about the bed, but you do notice that there is a piece of cloth underneath. So we should put card 26, which is the bedding, back into the evidence deck. Now we have to find out more about the cloth under the bed, so let's scan card number 27. When we go ahead and do that, it says under the bed you find a woman's dress. Well, this is yet another clue. This means we have found two clues in the scene. Now we should keep searching because there are three other relevant clues to the case. After we are done searching the scene, we can ask Cedric or Nicole about the objects that we found. Now we can also visit our family by scanning the home location. They are always there willing to help us. Finally, we can use our dog Percival by scanning his card. Now we must remember that all of our actions take in-game time. We can see the current time in the top right of the screen. Right now it is 9.50. Now each scan takes 5 minutes and traveling to a new location takes 20 minutes. Solving the case quickly may earn us bonus points. This means we should plan our actions wisely. For now, it probably makes the most sense though for us to focus on finding the three remaining objects. Well, there's four more cards that we would like to scan, so let's start by taking a look at the painting that was on the wall. When we scan that, it says there's nothing interesting uh, for this category, so that means we can simply return the painting back to the evidence supply. After that, let's scan the boxes. This says that it's a heavy wooden chest like the ones used to store clothing and other belongings, but it's currently empty. It is, however, a clue. And that's our third item. There are still two more for us to discover, though. So let's now take a look at the bottles that we saw on the table. That says it's a beautifully crafted bottle. The contents smell like perfume. Now that is also a clue, so we can put that into the red area. And it looks like there's just one more object left for us in this scene. Well, there's one more card that we picked out as well, so let's go ahead and scan the book. This says you don't need to be fluent in Latin to recognize the book on the table as the Holy Bible. Now this is also a clue. Well, it looks like that was the last clue that we needed to find in the scene, and we can now proceed with our investigation. Uh, from now on, we just need to ask characters about items and also about the missing servant. Uh, we should also probably visit our family at home or use the dog's help. Well, the first thing we should probably do is talk to Cedric once again. So let's go ahead and scan his code, and he's asking if there is any progress. Now that we have a bunch of evidence over here, I think let's begin by asking Cedric about that uh, hunting crossbow that we saw in the servant's room. So we can go ahead and scan this, and he says, That's my favorite crossbow. When I went to my hunting lodge a few days ago, I forgot to pack it, idiot that I am. So I sent Denise back home to fetch it. She never returned with it. Now, as you can see, 25 is the number associated with the servant that we saw before, so now we know her name. When I returned home yesterday, Nicole told me that Denise was gone. So was my ring. Well, next up, let's ask him about that big box that is empty in the servant's room. He says Denise used to keep her things in there. How did she manage to take it all out without being noticed by Nicole, though? Next up, let's ask him about that fancy-looking bottle that was on the table. In response, he says, yes, that's the scent my wife has favored recently. It must be perfume she bought for herself. Well, at this point, I think let's now talk to Nicole so we can say goodbye to Cedric and then scan Nicole's QR code. She says, how can I help you with your investigation, Sir Lavel? Well, let's go ahead and start by asking her about that fancy bottle that is the perfume she's been wearing. In response, she says, smells nice, doesn't it? In the past, Cedric used to buy me perfume, but now hunting is his entire focus. This is a bottle that I bought for myself. Next up, I think let's ask her about the clothes that seem to be kind of stuffed underneath the bed. She says, of course that's not mine. Can't you see it's the servant's dress? Denise must have left it. Well, I think let's say goodbye to Nicole at this point. I'm not sure asking her about more of these things makes sense considering it does cost five time every time we do that. 
Instead, I think let's now uh, go to our dog. Now we can use Percival to smell various objects that are where we are. So we can start by scanning the QR code for Percival. And it says, Percival barks and eagerly awaits our command. And just like I mentioned, Percival is a tracking dog, and we can show him any item in our physical possession to see how he reacts, and we do that by scanning. If the object has a recognizable human scent on it, the dog will lead us to a location where the person in question is or was present. Alternatively, Percival may point to the person in question if they're present at our current location. It's worth noting the dog won't react to any character cards or location boards. So let's start by having Percival smell the ranged weapon. It says that Percival instantly walks up to Cedric and stops in front of him, staring intently and emits a few soft barks. Well, that seems to confirm that this is Cedric's favorite crossbow. So now let's move on and have Cedric sniff this perfume bottle. When we do that, Percival turns his head away from the bottle in disgust. The smell of the perfume appears to overpower any recognizable human scent that might have been left on the bottle. Well, that's disappointing. Uh, I guess next we should have Percival smell these clothes of the servant. Oh, it says Percival sniffs the dress and then runs off his nose to the ground. You follow and arrive at the tenement house, location K. Percival runs up the staircase and stops at the third floor, barking at a closed door. You knock, and after a few long minutes, a frightened young woman opens it. She matches the description of the missing servant. Well, congratulations, we have managed to find Denise. Now we can move her card to location K, which we can place over here. And then, of course, we can put Denise in that location because that's where we found her. Next up, we have to retrieve the ring and figure out what happened. Then we should go to our family at home and try to close out the case. Well, we should certainly talk to Denise. And she says, who are you and what do you want? How did you find me? She certainly seems flustered, and I think let's go ahead and ask her about this ring right away. I didn't steal it, she says. I would never do that. I just, I can't tell you what happened. I promised. In any case, I don't have it anymore, so leave me alone. Well, that wasn't terribly helpful. I think now let's ask Denise about Lady Albert. She is the wife of Lord Alart. I used to work for them. It was a good position. How did I lose my job there? I can't tell you, sir. I promised. But it wasn't my fault. Well, next up, I think let's ask Denise about the Bible that we saw there in her room. To that, she responded, This is Lady Alart's Bible. I wager she spends a great deal of time praying to be forgiven for what she's done. After that, we can now, I think, ask her about the perfume bottle that was on the table. And she says that that's Lady Alart's perfume. It definitely wasn't a present from her husband. I should have known. Oh, I've already told you too much. Now, it's worth noting that sometimes a character can't or won't tell you much, and you may feel like you've hit a dead end, just like I do feel like we're at here. Now, when that happens, it's a good idea to follow another lead. Uh, in this case, uh, we haven't actually talked to any of our family members back at home, so I think maybe we should head over there. In order to do this, we have to say goodbye to Denise and then scan our home location to go there. Now, this is our family house where we can seek help from our relatives, our uncle who is a monk, our sister who is a merchant, and our brother who is a spy. In order to do this, we just have to scan the QR code printed under their portrait in order to talk to them. Now, there is also a solve the case button here at home, which we should tap when we decide we have solved the case and we are ready to finish the scenario. It's worth noting that in other scenarios, this button may appear in different locations. So, I think let's go ahead and start things off by asking questions of our uncle, the monk. And he says, oh, it's my beloved nephew. Many blessings in your search. How may a humble servant of the Lord use his books to help you? Now, our uncle is a monk who works for the monastery library. We should ask him questions about written resources or anything concerning religion or the clergy. Well, there was a big Bible in the room that we searched, so let's ask our uncle about that. To that he says, this is a beautifully made Bible. Look at these ornamental letters. Let's see. Oh, these few pages seem to be more worn than others, and somebody has underlined a few passages from the Song of Songs. Quam pulcra es et quam decora. It's the part where a lover praises the beauty of his beloved woman and tells her how much he desires her. And look, somebody wrote your Pascal next to it on the margin. Well, love is certainly a beautiful thing, but it's no excuse for defacing the Holy Scripture. After that, I don't think we have anything else to ask our uncle, so I think let's now talk to our sister, the merchant. She says, welcome, little brother. Let me guess, you found another mysterious object and you need my expertise. Our sister is a wealthy merchant and a collector of crafted goods. We can ask her about items. She can examine them for us and give us information that may help us track their origins or determine their value. Well, I am certainly curious to ask her about that bottle of perfume because it did look like it was potentially expensive. 
and she says, Mmm, it smells nice. The bottle looks to have been crafted very skillfully, probably a commissioned work. Look, the artist painted two heraldic figures, a griffin and a bird. They are facing each other, almost kissing. I believe that a similar griffin appears on Lady Alart's coat of arms. But who does the bird represent? Maybe you should ask our brother the spy. He's much more familiar with the heraldry of noble families. Now, at this point, we have a new symbol, which is the star and an eight. It says that we need to search through the special item cards, and we are going to have to find number eight. Now, we aren't allowed to look at any of these until we are instructed to do so, and number eight does indeed have a bird on it. Next up, we need to place this down into the blue area of the evidence board, and we can then ask characters about this special item in much the same way we ask them about these standard items. So we'll put this into that area. And now I think we will say goodbye to our sister, and now talk to our brother the spy. And he says, Hello brother, you may draw upon my knowledge of Paris and the secrets kept by its people. Your brother is the king's spy. His job is to know everything about the people of Paris, so you can ask him about the characters you meet. He obviously won't know every commoner, though. Now the main thing we are curious about here is what is up with that bird on the perfume bottle. So I think let's go ahead and ask our brother about it. To that, he says, a black raven on a yellow field is the coat of arms for the Corbeau family. Their lands are located near Avignon, but one of the family, Pascal Corbeau, has a house in Paris near the city outskirts. Now, it looks like Pascal's place is location F, so we can place that out here on the board. And then Pascal's character number is 23, so we can find that in the deck. And we are pretty sure that Pascal is over there, but for the moment, we will put him into the unlocated character spot until we know for sure. Now, speaking of Pascal, I'm curious to see what our brother knows about him. So we can go ahead and scan that card. And to that he says, Pascal is the only Corbeau living in Paris. Using family money, he has bought a mansion near the city outskirts, but never married. People say he enjoys a bachelor's life too much to ever settle down. Well, that is certainly interesting. And I'm also curious to see what our spy brother knows about Nicole Allart. To that, he says that she's the wife of Cedric Allart. She comes from the noble Calot family. Their coat of arms is a red griffin on a white field. Well, we're learning a little bit about these people, but I don't think it's helping us with the investigation. So let's go ahead and I think say goodbye to our brother. And let's go ahead and head over to Pascal's mansion. Uh, we don't know anything about that spot so far. So let's go ahead and scan the corner in order to travel there. Now, the residence is on the other side of the city, so we have to stop a passing carriage. The coachman agrees to drive us there for a few diners. His face is strangely familiar. Now, it is important to remember that we should refer to our prophetic vision cards from time to time during gameplay. This could really help us out with our investigation. Now, if you remember, this was the prophetic dream we awoke from at the start of this investigation, and I feel like it's starting to make more sense. As you can see, Nicole Allart is right over there, and she appears to be waving at the servant Denise. Now, on top of that, the carriage driver right here is indeed the same person who is in our prophetic dream. Now, it appears in this dream, we saw Nicole Allart bidding Nicole goodbye. One thing's for sure, this prophetic dream does make it seem like Nicole knows more about what's going on than she has let on. Let's go ahead and move on. So now it says that after 20 minutes, we arrive at an impressive house heralded by a large black raven on a yellow field painted above the main entrance. A doorman announces us, and after a while, Pascal Corbeau comes down to meet us. The coachman that drove you here is still on the other side of the street, allowing his horse to rest. So we can put Pascal right over here, and we know that the coachman is also here in this location. Now that we have arrived, I think let's go ahead and talk to Pascal. He says, what brings a noble knight and his canine companion to my house? Now the first thing that comes to my mind is asking him about Lady Alart. So let's go ahead and scan her QR code. And to that he says, I meet Lady Alart from time to time at church or during social gatherings. A charming woman, but why do you ask me about her? Well, the reason we even headed over here was because of that perfume bottle. So let's go ahead and ask him about it. To that he says, well, this is just a bottle of perfume. Anyone can decorate their bottles in any manner they wish. What do you actually want from me, Sir Lovell? I grow tired of you and your inquiries. Now, it doesn't seem like he is enjoying us poking around, but I do think I'd like to mention this Bible that seemed to have his name printed in it. To that he says, yes, I could see the word Pascal has been written in there, but am I the only Pascal in Paris? I think you're going too far with your insinuations, Sir Lovell. 
Now, we are certainly getting on his nerve, and unfortunately, he's not really giving us any information either, and I suppose he isn't really going to want to do that. So let's go ahead and say goodbye to him and instead have a chat with the coachman. So we can click right over there, and he says, what can I do for, my lord? Well, the main thing that sticks out to me is the fact that he is shown next to Denise in our prophetic dream. So let's go ahead and ask him about Denise. To that, he says, I remember driving this girl two days ago, my lord. She had just left her position with the Alarts. Or maybe she was forced to leave. I didn't ask. Lady Alart wanted me to drive her to the countryside. As we drove away, the girl told me she could not imagine living outside Paris and needed to rent a room in the city. She then asked me where she could sell some jewelry, so I told her about Old Turgis and drove her to his shop. That's all I know, my lord. Well, that does appear to be a good amount of information because we now have a new location that has been referenced. In addition to this, we also know that Old Turgis is there, and that is character number 21. Obviously, we aren't positive he's in that location, though, so we'll put him in the unlocated characters area for now. Well, the coachman said that that is all they know, so I don't think it really makes sense to keep asking him questions. Instead, I think let's try to talk to Old Turgis. With that in mind, we should now head over to that location. The merchant shop is brimming with all kinds of goods. Silverware is displayed on shelves next to dusty books and stuffed animals that have been tossed atop boxes full of jewelry and amulets. The owner greets us with a happy smile. Well, it looks like Old Turgis is indeed in the shop. With that in mind, we should certainly talk to him, and he asks, How can I help you? I have everything a noble knight may need. No doubt we can find something for the dog, too. Well, the main thing I'm curious about is what he knows about Denise. So let's go ahead and scan her card. And to that he says, Yes, she was here and made a deal. I don't want to tell you anything more. A good merchant should be discreet about his clients. After that, I am certainly curious about that deal. It's likely she tried to sell the ring, so let's now ask Turgis about it. To that he says, yes, I have a ring exactly like the one you're describing, but I'm not going to give it to you for free. Now it's worth noting that sometimes while we are in conversation mode, we might need to scan a specific card to get a desired reaction from a character. In this current situation, Simon Turgis is obviously wanting us to pay money for the ring, so we should offer him the coins that we got from Cedric Alart at the beginning of the scenario. Now those are up here in the red evidence area, so let's go ahead and scan the coins. After that he asks, so you want to pay me this money for the ring? Well, I think we should certainly do that because I am pretty confident that is the ring that was lost. So we can press yes and it says here you are, it's a pleasure doing business with you. Now after that, it seems that we can move the jewelry card up to our red area because we know exactly where it is. And then we are also going to have to take the coins and bring it down to the blue area because we don't have that money anymore. We have now done that. And then congratulations are in order. We've managed to find Denise and get the ring back. Now, if we believe we know why both went missing, we can now go to our family home and close the case. Now, we do have to remember that in Chronicles of Crime 1400, you don't always need to have irrefutable proof or make the perpetrator admit to their guilt in order to finish the scenario. Usually, a few clues and some logical reasoning are enough to answer the final questions. Now, I don't know about you, but I think I do actually know everything I need to in order to try and solve this case. Now, it's true we could move around and use some more time to try and be positive about it, but of course, the less time we use, the higher our score will be at the end of this scenario, so let's go ahead and head home and try to solve the case. Now, technically, we are still talking to Simon, so we can say goodbye and then scan home. Then it says that as we enter our family mansion, we feel proud of ourselves for the progress that we've made. We have found both the ring and the servant, and all we have to do now is gather our family around the table and tell them what happened. Now, if we are ready to solve the scenario, we have to tap the Solve the Case button, and in this scenario, it's located at our home, but in other scenarios, again, it could be in a different location. After we do that, we will be asked a series of questions about the case. In order to answer them, we will have to scan correct cards. Our score will depend upon our answers. So let's go ahead and press the Solve the Case button. It asks us if we are sure that we want to do this, and yes, we are sure. So now the first question says, who took the ring from Cedric's jewelry box? Now, I am pretty confident that that was Nicole. I'm pretty sure she gave the ring to Denise when she was, I guess, firing Denise. So we can select Next and then scan Nicole to say we think she is the one who took the ring from the box. The next question says, where is Denise now? Now, obviously, we know that she's over here, or at least she was last time we checked, so we can go ahead and scan that location. 
And then the next question says, who did Denise unexpectedly see when she came for the crossbow? Now, it seems more than likely to me that she saw Pascal, who was over there. It seems like they were probably having an affair, so we can click that over there. And then it says, good job, Sir Lavel. We have not only solved the mystery of the missing ring, but we have also managed to get it back. We've also learned about the affair between Nicole Allart and Pascal Corbeau. Sinners, sinners everywhere. Well, with that, we have completed this scenario. It's worth noting that we can play this again by going to the main menu, and in just a second, we will see a solution button that can explain the whole case if we want to see it. Now, as you can see, at the end, we have a score page. It says we got five out of five stars at the top, and then it also gives us scores for not only how quickly we were able to solve the case, but also for each of the questions that we answered. As you can see, we ended with a score of 130 out of 100, so we did very well with this tutorial. Now, lastly, as I mentioned before, there is a solution button at the bottom, and we can click that if we want to, and then this is going to lay out everything that happened throughout this scenario in case we maybe missed a thing or two, but in this case, I think we figured it all out. Well, at this point, the tutorial is officially over, and I hope that you've enjoyed learning how to play Chronicles of Crime 1400. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.